Hey guys, so today we're going to be testing some of the teachings of Rod Parsley, the senior pastor of World Harvest Church, one of the largest churches in the U.S. And in particular, in today's message, he is going to be talking on the topic of activating angels. Yeah, it should be interesting. But before we get to assessing those teachings, hello friends, my name is Matt. Welcome to my channel. I started this channel a while back with the goal of trying to help believers in the body of Christ Think biblically and use discernment when listening to Christian messages. So if you could please take a second to subscribe to my channel, that really helps to promote this Christian content on YouTube. Okay, so as I already mentioned, we're going to be testing some of his teachings as he is talking about how you can activate angels in your life. And with this first clip, he is going to be making reference to a Facebook post that he had recently made on this topic. So let's go ahead and check it out. And what I wrote with it is, I told you some time ago that your angels were coming. Some of you remember that. I felt that someone needed to be reminded today that as you exalt Christ above your situation, his angels excel in strength and hearken, watch now, because Elder Germain knew nothing about that I wanted to share with this. But three times in his exhortation, he mentioned you talking. As Ashton so often repeats, I think I've said it once and she said it 10,000 times. That's the multiplication of a voice. And, and that is that everything is prophetic. I didn't say pathetic. I said prophetic. All right, so he's, he's talking about speaking. You remember? Three different times in an eight-minute exhortation. He didn't know that I wanted to share this. They excel in strength and hearken to, and then I put in all caps, the voice of the Word of God. Now, angels do not respond to the Word of God as many have taught. They, they don't respond to this book laying beside your bed. You can just read the Bible. You have to read the Bible. They respond to the voice of the Word of God. Okay, so the main emphasis in this teaching was that angels respond to the voice of the Word of God. And that's the key word, voice. He says, angels don't respond to the Word of God. They don't respond to the Bible sitting beside your bed. They respond to the voice of the Word of God. And where he is going with this is he is saying that angels will be activated in your life if you audibly speak the word of God, that is how you get it to happen. And he is actually referencing within that clip a verse from Psalm 103. It's verse 20, and I'm going to read it out of the ESV. It says, Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. So that's where he talks about they obey the voice of of his word. Now, let's let's look at this passage again. And I want you to think when you read this verse, does it sound to you like what is being conveyed here is that the angels will respond as a believer audibly speaks words from the Bible? Is that what is being put forward here? Well, let's check it out. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, who do the word of the Lord, obeying the voice of his word. Guys, this verse has to do with the fact that God speaks and his angels obey whatever commands he had just given. This is not speaking of scripture and a believer speaking something out loud from scripture and that angels are therefore activated and are sent on assignment, as, as they might say, uh, to do whatever you told them to do because you audibly were speaking the word of God. And you see that within that whole clip, there is a major emphasis placed on speaking and on words. In fact, Rod Parsley said, everything is prophetic. Now, this is 
common word of faith, NAR type buzzwords that if you're an outsider, you hear this sort of thing and you're like, okay, I don't really know what he's talking about. It's probably not that big of a deal. When you say everything is prophetic, what you are saying is that everything that you audibly speak out loud, your words will come to pass. You are prophesying or you are speaking your future. Again, this is common word of faith that whatever you speak out loud is going to come looking for you. It, it's, you're going to speak those things into existence. That is a false teaching. I've done numerous videos on this channel refuting that teaching. You can look through some of my playlists or look through some of my old videos if you want to go in depth on that. But I bring that up because this is really setting a foundation for his sort of uh, teaching where he's going to say, hey, let me give you some examples of how when you speak something out loud, you are prophesying and you are causing it to happen. And we're going to see that, unfortunately, with a very blasphemous example. So they hearken to the voice of the word of God, or you and I, under the anointing and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, declaring the decree of the Lord, speaking the law of the Lord. That, after all, is what raised Jesus from the dead. Because David had said prophetically concerning him, death will not hold him. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Hallelujah. That, that's the power of words, right? Yeah, guys, this man really just said that what raised Jesus from the dead was David's words. David speaking is what raised Jesus from the dead. You know, not the power of God, but David uttering the words. The power was actually within David's words. I bring this up for two reasons. One, it's blasphemy. And two, because I think this is indicative of a major problem within the Word of Faith NAR movement. And that major problem is that the movement itself constantly blurs the line between God and man. In fact, oftentimes, it's a role reversal where it elevates man to the status of God and uh, really pushes God down to some sort of lower level. And so when we speak about David making these prophecies about um, the resurrection of the Messiah, we would correctly and biblically understand that, that it is God doing the raising. It is God's power that is raising Jesus from the dead. And David is simply a messenger who, by the inspiration of the Spirit, is saying what God is going to do. But in the Word of Faith movement, the power is taken from God. And David is no longer simply a message, re a messenger relaying that message. He is actually the one who has the power within himself. And it was his words. The power was in David's words themselves. And that is what raised Jesus from the dead. Again, guys, this is a huge problem because within the Word of Faith movement, this is why there is such a heavy emphasis on you speaking things out loud because the power is actually within you. And that's why I say it's role reversal because they don't teach that God has all of the power and that you can pray and ask for him to do things and that he might move on your behalf if it's in accordance with his will. It's no. All of the power has already been placed within you. You have the power and, and the way that you unleash the power is through speaking your own words. This is a heretical and oftentimes blasphemous teaching. And in fact, you th in case you think um, I am exaggerating things, I'm going to put a little link above um, to a previous video I did testing the teachings of Rod Parsley. Uh, I encourage you to check that out to see some really bad Christian teaching. But I even want to put a screenshot up on the screen where he said this, my decisions control God's behavior. So when I say that this movement, it, it has role reversal in it. I mean, this is a prime example. This man is teaching that you're the one who controls God. God's not in control, right? No, you're in control and you can get God to do whatever you want. This is blasphemy, guys. Listen, I know this sort of teaching sounds really good to people because, you know, according to their own teaching, even though it's erroneous, according to their teaching, you can activate angels into your life. You can get them to do whatever you want simply by speaking and believing. 
That is something that people want to hear, but it is not biblical. Guys, we must humble ourselves and recognize we are not God. We do not have that sort of power. We must put ourselves in the right place. We need to exalt God and humble. Look at ourselves humbly, okay? Um, we do not have the power to do these things. And when it gets to a point where you're saying that David is the one who resurrected God from the dead, I mean, I hope that that sort of statement will open your eyes. If you have a, a person who claims to be a Christian minister, and this is the sort of thing that they are teaching, they are taking the glory and the honor away from the Lord of glory, and they're placing it on a man. And I know David was a man after God's own heart, but he was just a man. In fact, read David's words in scripture. You see that David recognized that he needed a savior as well. He recognized that he was just a man and that he needed God to work on his behalf as well. Guys, Rod Parsley constantly mishandles the word of God. He is teaching dangerous doctrines that are leading people astray. So we must stay away from his teaching. And I hope this video today will be an encouragement and a reminder to you that we always need to test Christian teaching. Just because somebody calls themselves a pastor, just because they have a large church, just because they're on TV, just because they call themselves prophet or apostle or whatever it may be, that does not necessarily mean that they are correctly teaching the word of God to you. You must listen to everything that is being taught and you must compare it to scripture. If it does not line up, you are to reject the teaching. And if this is a consistent pattern, like it is with Rod Parsley, you are to reject this person as a teacher. You are not to sit under their ministry. You are not to listen to their messages. And so I point this out, and hopefully if you have been listening to his messages, you will see that this is unbiblical and you will turn away. Okay, guys, I hope this teaching has been helpful to you. If it has been, once again, if you would please take a second to subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. But thank you guys again for watching, and until next time, God bless.